lecture we're going to study um, some general aspects about the first order general um, ordinary differential equations. Um, so as I mentioned in the previous lecture, we can tell a great deal about um, properties of solutions of uh, an ODE without actually solving for it. Because as I mentioned before, um, most differential equations cannot be solved explicitly. So the great deal about um, the whole theory, which we're going to see in this lecture, is that um, we can actually tell, like I said, a great deal about properties of solutions just using basic um, calculus one stuff. So let's actually write down uh, again um, how the first order or the in the general form uh, looks like. Let's let's call it the standard form um, of a for, uh, first order or the which is y prime equals f of t y. Um, so on the left side we have a derivative um, y prime or dy dt, and on the right side is just any function of t and y. So the first thing you can do in terms of figuring out how the solution looks like is to remember from calculus 1 that dy dt, any derivative, is nothing but the slope of the tangent um, to y of t. So that means by simply plugging in some value of t and y on the right side, we can actually compute the slope of the tangent. We may not be able to describe or to plot the exact solution if I don't know how to solve for it, but I can find certainly the um, uh, slope of the tangent to that solution. So let's actually <coughs> look at a simple example that doesn't even require um, differential equations theory. So let's say um, y prime is equal to um, 2y. Uh, excuse me, 2t, I meant. <coughs> so something that doesn't depend on, on y on the right-hand side. <coughs> so the right-hand side doesn't depend on y. We can actually find um, values of the slope by plugging val different values of, of t. Right. So for example, if t equals 1, the slope is 2. If t equals 2, the slope is 4. If t equals minus 1, the slope is minus 2, and so on. So if I were to sketch these slopes, I can represent them by uh, small tangent segments, right? Um, so at t equals 1, uh, y prime is 2, right? So, um, and by the way, the, the right-hand side doesn't depend on y, right? So let's look at, let's say at y equals, um, I don't know, 1. It doesn't matter, right? I mean, the slopes will be the same as you look from top to bottom, right? Because y prime doesn't depend on y. <coughs> So if t equals 1 over here, um, the slope is 2, so it's a positive tangent, very steep, like that. Um, if t equals 2, it's going to be even steeper, positive tangent, right? Maybe I should make this a little bit less steep, like that, to indicate that this is even bigger positive slope. And if t equals minus 1 over here, that's a negative slope, so I can represent it like this. <coughs> now, of course, this is not a surprise, because, as I said, we don't need calculus to solve this equation because if the right hand side doesn't depend on y it's like telling you what the derivative is and you have to find the original function which is just via a direct integral so the integral of 2t of course we know it's t squared and so we know that the solution is t squared and don't forget the constant of integration very important at this point so t squared plus c so we know already that solutions of this ODE are actually parabolas stacked on top of each other like that. Yeah, I mean, for every value of C, you get one of these parabolas. Um, but I want to illustrate that if you actually sketch enough of these slopes, you get an idea of how the solution looks like. That is really the core um, point of this, this lesson today, right? I mean, by sketching enough slopes, in this plane, in the in the graph of y with respect to t, uh, in this coordinate system, you get the idea of how the solution looks like depending on uh, which point you start with. <coughs> so these slopes, so all the slopes that you represent in the in the coordinate system y with respect to t, so all slopes form 
what we call um, a slope field. And so when we move on to look at an example using a computer, uh, an ODE plotter, an ODE plotter basically will show you the slope field. So <clears throat> when you introduce the differential equations in a plotter, um, by default, you will see the picture filled in with lots and lots of slopes. And then you can click on a point, that will be the initial point, and then the solution is drawn from that point. So in this, this visual lecture, we're going to do a couple of more examples like that using um, um, other examples, of course. Uh, but then immediately after you finish this, this visual lecture, just make sure you uh, run the examples um, with a plotter as well. And also look at the Camtasia video where I show you how to do that um, on my own computer. Uh, that'll be the last part of, of today's lecture. <clears throat> so let's move on with another example. Um, this time, um, uh, one second. So another example this time uh, in which the Y um, is present on the right hand side because, you know, you really do have you, you really need to have both T and Y to make it a true differential equation in the sense that if it's, if it's no Y on the right hand side, then like I said, you don't need um, any special theory, you just integrate both sides. <clears throat> so suppose, for example, I take um, Y prime equals, uh, let's say, 2T minus Y. So we cannot find Y by direct integration. Remember, Y is really Y of T. So you can't know what the integral of y of t is until you find it. If I integrate the left side, you can say y, right, because the integral of y prime is y, but on the right hand side you will have the integral of y, which again, you didn't find yet, so you don't know how to do that. So you will never basically solve a differential equation with uh, y on the right hand side, like that, by simply integrating both sides. That, that won't work. <coughs> but as in the previous examples, if I plug in t and y, I'm going to find the slope of the tangent at that point. So for any t and y, for any pair of points t and y, 2t minus y is the slope of the tangent to the solution y of t. Um, so let's move on with a couple of examples. Um, and just pick some random points, right? Um, so the first attempt you can try to do is to just essentially draw enough uh, slopes to figure out how the solution looks like. You will see that that's not actually an efficient way to do it. There's a better way. <clears throat> but let's pick a couple of random points. So let's say t is 0, y is 0. That means the slope is 2 times 0 minus 0, which is 0. Let's pick a 1 for t. 0 for y, that's 2 times 1 minus 0, that's 2. Um, what else? Let's see. Um, let's say 0, 1. Put another point like that. That's 2 times 0 minus 1. The slope is minus 1 in this case. Um, let's put also another point. Let's say 1, 1. And you can keep on going, obviously, right? So 2 times 1 minus 1. The slope is 1 and so on. That's not very efficient to do by hand, right? Because you'll have to actually compute hundreds of hundreds of slopes to get an accurate idea of how the solution looks like. But anyway, I mean, if the problem will, will ask you to just give an example of a uh, couple of slopes in the slope field, you could do that, right? So at the point zero, zero, the slope is zero. So you can indicate this with a horizontal tangent like that. At the point one, zero, which is right here, uh, the slope is 2, so you indicate it as positive, right? I mean, going up from left to right. You don't have to measure it exactly, but for example, if you uh, sketch the slope 2 and 1 in the same graph, right? So 1 comes from the point 1, 1, right? It's, it's over here. So at the point 1, 1, uh, the slope is 1. So you got to make it a little bit less steep, right, than this one to indicate that this is positive but bigger than, than this one here. Um, what else? Uh, we have the point <coughs> zero, 01 over here, that the slope is minus 1, so here we have a negative slope, and so on. So if, if that's all I have in the picture, I can have an idea that solution maybe goes like that, 
but again it's not very accurate because you will have to fill in lots of lots of extra slopes to figure out um, how the solution looks like <coughs> so uh, as I mentioned in the notes um, much better way to go about it is the so-called method of isoclines um, it's a fancy name but it's nothing but a different way of putting all these things together meaning that instead of picking random points uh, and then finding the slope corresponding to that point you may want to actually figure out uh, these slopes by the slope value so for example I decide to localize all the slopes equal to zero I, I, I want to know where all of these slopes uh, that are horizontal tangents where are they located um, then maybe I want to look at the slope equal to 1 and I want to know all the points where the slope equal to 1 are located. This way I can actually sketch much, much many more slopes uh, and I have a much better idea how the, the solution looks like if I have to do it by hand, obviously. So the method of isocline, let's write it here. Um, <clears throat> it's a method actually to sketch all slopes of a given value or more like more precisely to actually localize them geometrically how they appear in the in the slope field so we're going to use the same example but for instance i want to know um the slopes where are they located right i want to know the slopes zero one minus one and let's say two so how do I localize the slopes equal to zero? Well, I'm going to set the right-hand side, which, remember, is the uh, replacement for the derivative, right? I'm going to set it equal to zero. And I'm going to look at this from a geometric perspective, right? I mean, what does that look like in terms of the graph of what I get? So once you set this equal to zero, you get the function of y with respect to t. So you get the curve, right? I mean, in this case, it happens to be a line. So I know that whenever the solution crosses this line, the tangent to the solution will be zero. The slope of the tangent will be zero. So I can essentially fill in that line with all the slopes equal to zero. Similarly, if I set this equal to one, again, it's another line, a different one. Uh, and all of them are lines, right? I mean, when I sketch these isoc lines, when I set them equal to the slopes that I want, all of them will be lines. They can be any curve, really. I mean, it depends on, on how complicated the... Um, the y prime is, but you know, in this case, they are all lines. <coughs> so, what does that mean in terms of sketching the the actual slope field? Well, <coughs> the first one that I sketch here, two t minus y, just you know, sketch it like any other line. You're going to plug in two points. So, if t is zero, y is zero. That's one point. Uh, if t is one, y is two. So it goes to the point 1 and 2 as well. So that is the isocline corresponding to the slope equal to 0. I'm going to use the dotted line so that I won't confuse it with the actual solution of the ODE. This is not the solution of the ODE. That's just the placement of all the slopes equal to 0 for the solution to the ODE. So I know that here all the slopes will be horizontal like that. So that's the advantage of the isoclines. I mean, you can fill in the the picture with many many more slopes than by picking random points like this <coughs> um, the other one let's see y equals if I get this by y um, y equals 2t minus 1 right so that's basically like the previous line but lower down one unit so the one corresponding to slope 1 so it's gonna be parallel to this one the other isoc line Right, so I'm going to indicate here that this is the slope 0, this will be the slope 1. Um, so here I can indicate it by tangents, positive, right? Positive tangents, positive slopes going up like that. Um, the other one for the slope equals 2, um, it's lower further down, 1 unit. By the way, in practice, you will do this with a slope field. You're not going to be asked to do too many sketches like this by hand, just, just to have a rough idea. So this is for the slope 
equals two, uh, and of course they should look much steeper than these ones, right? Kind of like that. It's not it's not that accurate, but but you get the idea, hopefully. Uh, and let's put a negative slope, right? I mean, this is 2t plus 1, if you get it by itself, y by itself. This is the slope um, minus 1. So here the slopes are negative. So in terms of what a solution does, at least in this region for these isoclines, I can kind of tell that the each... I mean, for any point I pick, the solution kind of goes like that, yeah? So you basically sketch the solution by guiding yourself with these tangents, right? You don't want to go across the tangent like that, right? Because that'll mean you don't understand the meaning of the tangent. Um, the, the graph should never um, cross the tangent line. <coughs> so once again, isoclines are nothing but curves for which um, the slope is a given value. And you decide what the value is, by the way. If you want to sketch, you know, 100 isoclines, you're free to do that, right? I mean, we don't do that, but um, that is the whole idea. <coughs> so in the next part of the lecture, we're going to move on to another very important topic, namely the concept of an equilibrium point or a constant solution. These, these are very easy solutions to find, but very important um, in modeling work, as you'll maybe see later. So, see you immediately on the next part of this lecture.